It was late 1971. In Military Region 2, North Vietnamese units were already showing signs of heavy activity. Intelligence reports had been streaming into two corps headquarters since fall 1971. The Ho Chi Minh Trail sensory net had shown that there was increased movement in Communist Base Area 609, right at the tri-border area where Cambodian, Vietnamese, and Laotian borders connected. This was the perfect location to launch strikes into northern Kontum province. Defectors, captured documents, and other sources confirmed that the B-3 Front's 2nd and 320th Divisions of the People's Army of Vietnam were preparing for the attack. Heavy, Soviet state-of-the-art 122mm and 130mm howitzers were also reported to have been infiltrated into the area. The two core senior advisor, John Paul Van, and his deputy, Brigadier General George Ware, attended the November 1971 MACV meeting about the impending attack. Unlike the other three corps in South Vietnam, which had generals as senior advisors, Van was a civilian State Department advisor. General Ware personally commented that Van doubted the presence of tanks in two corps and that the numbers were overblown. Much of the Vietnamese and American two corps leadership believes the same. However, nobody doubted the impending attack into military region 2. Several months later, in February 1972, Allied intelligence reported that 26,200 troops had infiltrated into military region 2 since the beginning of the year. The South Vietnamese soldiers of two corps, as well as their American advisors, would have to brace for the inevitable strike towards Gontum. Unfortunately for them, Tu Corps was a very difficult region of South Vietnam to defend. Out of the four regions of South Vietnam, Region 2 was the harshest. It was the most extreme in climate and terrain. Unlike the other regions, which had a reasonably sized coastal plains area before reaching the mountains, the coastal strip of MR2 was extremely thin but housed the majority of the population. The Trung Sơn mountain range stretched in parallel with the coast, reaching up to 8,500 feet high before settling down to a 3,000 feet in the central highlands area. The highlands were the most underdeveloped part of Vietnam, with the vast majority covered in very dense jungle. The majority of the highways that passed through it were simple two-lane dirt roads that connected the isolated cities in the region. They were enclosed by jungle on either side, which made them perfect locations for roadblocks and ambushes. Villages were small and sparse, holding several families at most. The major ethnic group present in the highlands was not Vietnamese, but rather the indigenous Montagnards. They disliked the Vietnamese skin majority in general, but actively fought against the communists, especially after the Dak Sơn massacre in 1967. Many joined the Army of the Republic of Vietnam as a consequence. American advisors in the region praised the Montagnard's performance, especially in Ranger units. This entire region was almost half of South Vietnam's entire surface area, yet had only about 3 million people, about one-fifth of the South Vietnamese population. It was defended by two corps, which was commanded by Lieutenant General Ngo Yu. Even with the massive area, Two Corps only had two Arvin divisions assigned to defend it. The 22nd Arvin Division, commanded by Major General Ling Optrian, and the 23rd Arvin Division, commanded by Colonel Li Tongba. Other Corps had three divisions each. Generally, the 22nd Division defended Northern Two Corps, with its headquarters at Kontom, and the 23rd Division defended Southern Two Corps, with its headquarters at Ban Meitwut. They had no fixed provincial areas of responsibility like in the other corps. Instead, regiments were moved around where they were needed. Each division's regiments almost always fought entirely on their own, isolated from each other. However, to handle the larger area, each of these two corps regiments had four battalions instead of the usual three. Additionally, the 22nd Division had four regiments instead of three. In the province of Gontom, Right next to the Commons Base Area 609, Arvin forces were preparing their defenses. John Paul Van decided to concentrate forces at the Tan Can and Dak Do 2 base areas. The 22nd Division commander had also just been replaced by Colonel Le Duc Dat at the beginning of the year. 
He was unfortunately unpopular with the American advisors, who considered him incompetent and corrupt. Regardless, Van convinced Lt. Gen. Yu to deploy the 22nd Division with Colonel Dat in command at Duncan. While Yu was the official commander of two corps and Van was just his advisor, Van had directly intervened in past drug charges against Yu, ensuring that Gen. Yu obeyed his advice. Effectively, Gen. Yu was a conduit for Van's personal command of Arvin II Corps. Colonel Dat moved his headquarters into the firebase on January 27th to operate alongside the 42nd Regiment already there. Its 1st, 2nd, and 4th Battalions were at Duncan, while the 3rd Battalion was deployed externally. The 47th Regiment was moved from Peiku to Dukdo II. The 14th Cavalry Regiment, organic to the 22nd Division, was deployed at Duncan as well. An additional armored unit, the 19th Cavalry Regiment, was deployed to Duncan, then immediately rerouted to Ben Het by Colonel Dat. While called regiments, these cavalry units were equivalent in size to American cavalry battalions. The 22nd Division's remaining 40th and 41st Regiments were deployed at Binden Province, protecting 200,000 civilians. The 40th Regiment was deployed in Northern Binden Province at Landing Zone English, and the 41st Regiment was deployed in Southern Binden Province, north of Guinyan at Landing Zone Crystal. Benhet Base, which guarded Route 512 to the west of Dakto 2 and Duncan, was where the 71st and 95th Border Ranger Battalions were deployed. While these were officially battalions, they were only reinforced companies in size. It would additionally hold most of the M41 light tank, since Colonel Dat had thought that would be where the main North Vietnamese strike would come from. Guarding Gontum directly, the 2nd Ranger Group, with the 11th, 22nd, and 72nd Ranger Battalions were based at FSB November just north of the city. They served as the main defensive unit for the city along with two regional force companies. One of the key points of the defense was Rocket Ridge. This was a large line of mountains just west of Gontom, where a set of fire support bases, or FSBs, were placed. There were four major FSBs at Rocket Ridge, Firebase 5, Firebase 6, Firebase Charlie, and Firebase Delta. FSB 5 was manned by the majority of the 72nd Border Ranger Battalion, along with a company of the 3rd Battalion of the 42nd Regiment. FSB-6 was manned by the 1st Company of the 72nd Border Ranger Battalion and a platoon of the same 3rd Battalion, 42nd Regiment. FSB-Delta was manned by a single company of the 2nd Rangers. To help defend Rocket Ridge and Gontum, on February 15th, the 2nd Airborne Brigade was deployed into Gontum. Its command post was based at Vaudin, protected by the 7th Airborne Battalion. The 9th Airborne Battalion was deployed at Dakto 2 alongside the 22nd Division, and the 11th Airborne Battalion was deployed at FSB Charlie on Rocket Ridge. Along with the main defensive locations in the Duncan and Dakto area, there were isolated border bases called Daksang, Dakpek, and Pole Klung. Daksang was defended by the 90th Border Rangers, Dakpek the 88th Border Rangers, and Pole Klung the 62nd Border Ranger Battalion. Even with this defensive structure in northern Gondum province, the 23rd Arvin Division, which typically guarded Southern II Corps, started to move north as well. The 44th Regiment, originally based in Song Mao, Binh Tuan province, was ordered to An Khe in mid-February to keep Highway 19 clear. The 45th was located at Play Ku, II Corps headquarters. The 53rd Regiment was still in Southern II Corps in their native Dalat area. They would eventually be shipped north as well. Additionally, there was the Republic of Korea Capital Division, stationed just west of Queen Yun. The Koreans were also in the process of withdrawing from South Vietnam. However, they were signed with keeping Highway 19 clear while still in Vietnam. John Paul Vance Deputy, Brigadier General Ware, seeing that the North Vietnamese buildup was far larger than seen before in two corps, suggested a defense in-depth strategy. This was better suited to conventional warfare as each layer would stall the enemy attack and allow for maximum airstrikes as North Vietnamese forces had to build up against each new line. However, even after directly meeting with the MACB commander, General Abrams, two corps would continue with Van's concentrated defense at Duncan. 
Newly captured documentation and Chu Hoi Pavan defectors indicated that the attack on Tu Corps would start around mid-March. In response, the South Vietnamese Joint General Staff ordered the Reserve 3rd Airborne Brigade to Kontum. A company of the 1st Airborne Battalion would join the Rangers on FSB Delta. With the majority of two core forces, as well as two airborne brigades deployed in Kontum province, South Vietnamese forces were in place to defend against the North Vietnamese offensive. On the North Vietnamese side, the Communist B-3 Front and part of the B-1 Front faced the South Vietnamese II Corps. The B-3 Front was commanded by Lieutenant General Wang Minh Tao, considered one of North Vietnam's best generals. B-3 had two divisions under its command, the 320th Division and the 2nd Division. It commanded the fighting in the highlands themselves. The B-1 Front, also known as Military Region 5, controlled the fighting on the coastline of Arvin II Corps, commanding the 3rd Pavan Division. Military Region 5 was commanded by Major General Chu Hui Mun. Each of these three divisions were highly experienced in combat. The 320th Division, commanded by Colonel Nguyen Kim Tuan, was one of the original 6 steel and iron divisions of the People's Army. The 2nd Division, commanded by Colonel Nguyen Chun, had been fighting in MR2 since 1967 against the Americans in Kontom and Darlak provinces. It was very familiar with the region. The 3rd Pavan Division, commanded by Colonel Liu Yang, was nicknamed the Yellow Star Division and regarded as an elite communist unit. There were four additional independent regiments that would participate in the highlands, pushing the number of North Vietnamese personnel to the equivalent of three North Vietnamese divisions in Kontum province alone. The North Vietnamese laid out the plan to seize Military Region 2. The 3rd Division was deployed in the valleys of Binh Dinh province. It would attack northeast, destroying the 40th Arvin Regiment immediately, and seizing the province. It would additionally cut Highway 19 at the An Khe Pass, cutting Pleiku off on the coast. The Yellow Star Division would gradually push southwards to destroy the 31st Arvin Regiment and take Quy Nhơn, one of the main military ports of Tu Corps. It was reinforced with the 303rd, the 306th, and the 20th Sapper Battalions to achieve these objectives. Simultaneously, in the Central Highlands, the Independent 95B Regiment would seize the Chu Pao Pass on Highway 14 between Pleiku and Kondom. Both Highways 19 and 14 would effectively be cut off. With Kondom Province isolated, the Province 2nd Division, along with most of the 203rd Regiment and the Independent 66th Regiment, would destroy the 22nd Division headquarters and its two regiments at the Duncan, Dakto area. The Pavan 320th Division, along with the remaining armor, would simultaneously seize the FSBs on Rocket Ridge. Both divisions would then converge on Kon Tum, capture it, then push towards Play Coup. Sapper, anti-aircraft, artillery, and local force units would be used to support all three divisions in their operations. If successful, the occupation of Play Coup in the highlands and Quy Nhơn on the coast would result in South Vietnam being completely cut in half. To facilitate this combined arms offensive, the 7th Engineer Regiment built a 4 meter wide road over 100 kilometers long from base area 609 right up to the staging areas on Duncan and Dakto bases. Trucks would carry food, fuel, and ammunition to sustain the attack. With the initial communist buildup and offensive inevitable, starting on February 12th, the US and Vietnam Air Forces launched a campaign of airstrikes in the vicinity of Base Area 609 as a preemptive measure. 80 B-52 arc light strikes fell down near the Duncan area in three weeks. 48 hours of continuous strike aircraft and gunships were sent to the region to disrupt logistics and buy time. Even then, in late March, before the Nguyen Hue offensive was officially launched, isolated Arvin units heavily contacted the North Vietnamese. The 23rd Ranger Battalion was surrounded on March 24th for four days before the 11th Rangers could reach them. The 2nd Airborne Brigade and 47th Regiment were also heavily contacting the enemy west of Rocket Ridge. Even though isolated reports of tanks continued to come in, one of which was made by two American Cobra pilots, John Paul Van and the rest of Allied Two Corps leadership still hesitated to believe their presence. The People's Army of Vietnam had never deployed T-54 and T-55 main battle tanks in Tu Corps before. 
Ban, and General Yu would keep their concentrated deployment at Duncan to face the 320th Division and three independent regiments detected in 609. Unknown to them, the 2nd Pavan Division had just redeployed into South Vietnam and was now just west of Rocket Ridge. The South Vietnamese soldiers in II Corps would face the initial brunt of the offensive at its current deployment. They could only wait for the coming onslaught at this point, feeling the rumbling of the arc lights in the distance. <laughs> 